Now, just as with any organisation, schools have acceptable use policies around educational technologies. So you will need to abide by and understand the acceptable use policies set in place by the schools that you work in or visit on your practicum experiences. And also need to work with these policies um, in terms of having students meet them and teaching your students to meet such policies. But also around using them to teach your students what is acceptable and not acceptable around the use of technology. <coughs> now, acceptable use policies can be restrictive. Um, there will be various technologies that you wish to use that you will be unable to use because they don't meet the requirements um, set in place by these policy documents. Now, policies can change, and they do change over time. I can still recall when the internet was banned in schools, and email was banned in schools, and pretty much everything new is immediately banned in schools. At the moment, we're seeing a range of artificial intelligence technologies banned in schools. Now, schools are by their nature relatively conservative. So, the default position is to err on the side of caution. And until a new technology is understood, it will be restricted in how it can be used in an educational environment. That's only natural. Now, that is of course challenging when you are exploring with your students the latest technologies and how they can be incorporated. So there's always going to be some tension you will face between what you want to do with new technologies and what is currently permitted within the school's system. Now that said, there are always exceptions to any rule. And if you can make an argument and gain the approval of your school administration and normally of students' parents, then you can do pretty much anything within reason. So, Acceptable use policies are there to provide guidelines and frameworks to work within safely. But they can be um, adapted. And there's many instances where a technology may not be appropriate for general use in a school, where it may be appropriate to be used under specific conditions and um, circumstances in a um, IT educational way. One extreme example of that would be white hat hacking, where students purposely try to break into each other's um, secure environments in order to better understand computer security and the vulnerabilities that exist within computers and networks. Now, of course, in general practice, that would be considered um, extremely against acceptable use policies. But under controlled circumstances, it can be done in a way that is acceptable. So acceptable, policy, acceptable use policies and um, IT management processes will be, the, will be an ongoing challenge for any technologies educator. But there are ways of working with that. And as you gain in experience and school administration has confidence in you, you will be called upon to help frame such policies and deciding when and where and how such rules and regulations we put in place to restrict the use of technologies at various times. Now, I've provided you with a number of example acceptable use policies from the um, state sector and also from the private school sector. In the general, general education Queensland, our state schools um, probably have some of the most strict acceptable use policies, particularly around the internet, um, of any schools in Australia. Uh, while our private schools tend to have very few relative restrictions. Now, probably the biggest area of concern you'll face is restrictions on access to internet sites, uh, particularly within Education Queensland schools. They are very heavily locked down and 
again, you can make arguments for access to various sites and more and more that's being devolved down to principles being able to authorize such um, access. But in the main, there is a, a lot of online tools and activities that are unavailable for use. Now, there was generally an expectation that if there was a um, an Education Queensland managed service of an equivalent capacity, then the Education Queensland service would be used. Um, that's become a less and less sustainable as more and more services have developed and Education Queensland has had increasing difficulties in uh, replicating those services within a closed environment and a secured environment. But that said, that is still a general expectation. Um, so you need to become familiar with, particularly if you're working in an Education Queensland school, what services are available locally and um, what the expectations are around using those. Now, unfortunately, in the field of technologies, such technologies date very quickly. And while what was a, an equivalent of industry practice 10 years ago is most certainly not now. Uh, but you will need to still work within that framework. Now, there are lists of those technologies and so forth, but they tend to be restricted to Education Queensland employees. So I can't share a lot of that with you. Um, likewise, there are restricted websites. Um, a lot of restricted websites. I have provided you with a list of some of the whitelisted and blacklisted um, websites around categories, but you'll see that there is a lot of different categories that are blocked, um, so you won't be able to have students utilize those. Now this includes a lot of technology-based categories um, involving the use of programming languages and things of that nature. Of course, they are considered as though they, they could potentially be used for illicit uses. Now, of course, they can also be used in many cases for productive educational purposes. And so sometimes you'll need to make an argument for that. So have a look at those lists and have a look at the acceptable use policies. So a lot of this relates to cybersecurity. Now, while all educators have a responsibility as part of um, digital literacy to enable students to work safely with the use of technology. Digital technologies teachers have a particular role in this and you will need to be um, well versed in um, cybersecurity education and involved in the various processes and practices. Now in the main, we tend to use external um, resources a fair bit in this space. There are a number of governmental organizations which provide resources, uh, training packages and so forth to use with students. Um, and the eSafety Commission uh, in particular has a, um, a good set of resources that are used with students um, to try to maintain some national consistency around eSafety um, education in particular. Because that's a particular touchstone that's um, quite problematic with the media um, when things go wrong with um, online bullying or um, things of that nature with students that tends to uh, gain media attention and hence the government puts resources into uh, addressing those issues or at least supporting education in addressing those issues. So beyond the curriculum there are also a range of other things you need to be aware of as a digital technologies teacher. Now, once upon a time when computers were new, in order to use them as a teacher, you had to also know about how to set them up and how to maintain the network and connect to the internet and, and so forth. That time has pretty much passed. And now we have professional IT staff in schools that look after the, the back end management of the technology while teachers focus on their area of expertise which is the, the teaching of um, subjects that utilize these technologies now 
Again, that can cause some friction, particularly between IT educators and IT managers and support staff. Um, in the main, IT managers in schools are challenged a lot. Uh, they have a lot of power to make decisions as to access to various resources and technologies and so forth. And IT teachers tend to understand more about technology than the average teacher or principal. And whereas an IT manager can often just make a statement that that's not acceptable because it offers too many risks, um, an IT teacher can challenge such statements um, because you are hopefully much more aware of the actual risks and potential issues and so forth. So there is often some potential conflict between IT managers and IT teachers. Now it doesn't have to be that way and you're going to be have a much more harmonious teaching career if you get on well with your IT managers and they can be a great resource um, because they have an understanding of the technologies and you could utilize that and um, use them as case studies for your students to explore issues of um, network management and things of that nature. So I encourage you to get to know your IT managers and to develop a positive working relationship with them. But always being aware that you also have a responsibility within the school ecosystem to support the educational aspects of technology. Uh, while IT managers may not necessarily have that as their primary focus, they're much more responsible for the general security and ongoing management of the technology in a school. And that can sometimes be facilitated by overly restrictive practices or um, having the tech technology used um, below its full potential as an educational um, device. So having some understanding of the parallel ecosystem in schools of IT managers and support staff and educational staff is important. And there are various um, structures that have developed to support the IT managers, support staff, help desk staff um, within schools. And you can double in that space. Now, generally, for most schools, you won't be able to control that space. Although some schools do promote um, their teachers to the IT manager role and have it as a dual technology coordinator role um, and educator role. That's becoming less and less common as the IT role has grown to such an extent that it really does take a full-time IT staff member to manage that. And indeed in some large schools, there might be a, a dozen IT staff me members. So having a teacher manage that is less and less common. That said, it is still a promotional pathway um, that exists in many schools where you can rise to a school leadership position as the IT manager, um, looking after the curriculum side of things, but also looking after the technical side of things as a manager, not necessarily as the hands-on um, technician. But in the main, that has gone down the pathway similar to business managers in schools, where that is a specialist role of um, an industry professional separate to an educational role. Okay, so we'll explore some of these issues in the tutorial.